audio there. They're going. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then we got video. All right, great. Backup recording happening. Okay. All right, it's time. Sit back and enjoy what would have been Tuesday's noises, but are Wednesdays in three, two, one. And speaking of rude, there is flaming. Flaming. Unusually pointless and excessive outrage in electronic mail has become so common that it's now got its own name, flaming. If you receive an angry message, you've been flamed. I want to know more about the vibrator. <laughs> We can't date, you're too oily. This is The Morning Stream. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to TMS for Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021. Now, here's the problem. (laughs) Okay. Brian, there was no show yesterday, as you know. Right, right. Because you weren't on it, and neither were I. Were I? Right, right. That's that's why there was no show. Uh, was you need I. us yeah. to make a show, and we didn't have us. Yeah, we didn't have us. Now, yeah. some of you are saying, "Oh, that explains why it wasn't in my feed." And I'm, you know, sorry. I sent mm-hmm. you 50 emails mm-hmm. to say where's the show because I did get a few of them. <laughs> did you still? <laughs> yeah. Here's the problem. Uh, it wasn't our fault. Twitch was down, and uh, yeah. uh, things were looking grim for it coming back up. And I really wasn't prepared to do like a no audience type show and people at home are going well aren't we like 99 percent of your listeners yes you are and we could have sure we could have squeezed it through but then it, we didn't yeah, okay yeah it's really tough i mean right now even doing coverville without you know 40 people in chat it's so tough yeah. i've had to do it a couple times it's like oh this i need something i need responses while i'm playing songs even if it's like this is garbage and it's not <laughs> a song by garbage uh, I still need that feedback, and and we need that here. So, the you know both audiences are very important for different reasons. Do you have people when you do play garbage, like the band? Do they ever pipe up and go, "Oh man, this song is garbage"? Do they ever do yeah, that? Yeah, of course, of course they do. Okay, yeah. so that's just a yeah. thing everyone thinks to do. <laughs> I, okay, all right. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. Actually, that seems like oh, a yeah. real dumb no, thing to do. And... It's, uh, it's required. It's basically it's really the the uh, the chat room for Coverville is like sixty percent dad jokes. Mm. Really, is what it is. Well, good. That's that's how, what it should be. Those are the numbers I like to see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yeah. anyway, forty so percent bacon. So we're sorry. <laughs> yeah, because it's always always there. Um, <laughs> we're so we we apologize. Is what I'm saying. Okay. You missed out on yeah, some riveting geez. political discussion with jury. I'm sure we would have had some kind of great pre-impeachment uh, trial in the Senate business going on. I'm sure that would have been a, a topic of of great interest. Uh, yes. But no, you, you didn't get it. <laughs> you didn't. For that, you'll just have to watch uh, politics, politics, politics. Yeah, go check out the Triple P, son. In the meantime, we got a warning from a listener. And this oh, is important. No. Okay. Yeah, this is important. We got to heed these warnings. Warning. Here, maybe I have a clip. Let's see. Do I have a way to warn people? Hold on. This this shouldn't take long. <laughs> this shouldn't take a whole bunch of time. If you can't find anything, you could always play our trope alert from uh, Film Sack. Oh, here it is. Warning. Okay. Warning. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. good. So, warning. Uh, here's, here's the warning. Dear Scallion and Basil, mm-hmm. or Basil if you're watching Faulty Towers. <laughs> Uh, this is from I always remember that one too with her yelling at the yeah. end isn't that it weird like, it feels like she yelled at him like three out of every four episodes you'd hear uh, uh, you'd hear his wife yell but there's, Basil there's that one at the end though where he puts himself yes. in the in the He's laundry basket in, yes thing. exactly and she's running around the hotel looking for him oh Just she's on the phone screaming. and she's like going Basil yeah. Basil and I'm pretty Basil. sure she repeats it or they repeat it it's the same audio even, maybe? I'm not sure, yeah, but it maybe. stuck with yeah. me. I don't know why. So that's funny you said that. <laughs> anyway, he says this. A question about eating raw potatoes came up on episode 2057. I'm catching up on a backlog, and I'm hoping someone has told you by now, but, and then all caps, mm-hmm. do not eat raw potatoes. I repeat, do not eat raw potatoes. They are poisonous, says... <laughs> Uh, Cornwall Hugh. Yeah. Oh no, that's not his name. Sorry, Nikki. Nope. Nikki. Nikki. Dedicated Nikki, science who's a contestant on uh, ANTP. As a matter of fact, that's right. It says your dedicated sheep scientist listener. Um, 
I like Nikki. Uh, so it I says here, um, potatoes are a member of the nightshade family and are, uh, I'm sorry, as are tomatoes and eggplant. Well, we're eating those, aren't we? We're eating those. Mm -hmm. Well, I eat tomatoes raw, but I don't eat eggplant raw. Well, that's true. I don't eat eggplant, period. I don't like them. Really? Don't like oh, them. Oh, I like a good eggplant parmesan. So does my wife. Her and I argue mm -hmm. about this all the time. I hate them. <laughs> Just can't do Is them. it because it's the uh, the emoji for, for peen? For a ween, ween, ween? Um, yeah, yeah. No. I actually always forget that that's what that is. But you know what else I don't like is, um, oh, what's the other one? You put it on pizza artichokes. sometime. Artichokes. Freaking hate artichokes. Ugh. Really? Oh, Ugh. my God. We used to, uh, it, it's the the goofiest thing, but sometimes, like, for a movie snack, instead of popcorn, we'll seriously steam an artichoke in the oven, make some melted butter, and then just, you know, you peel off a a, uh, a leaf, you dip it in the butter, and you know, scrape it off with your, your teeth, and toss the belief in the uh in the trash but it's definitely the healthier choice that you're doing there definitely help well i don't know about the hot butter the melted oh, yeah. butter <laughs> yeah, good point well i don't know isn't butter but, fat yeah. supposed to be good for us now i heard that somewhere i can't keep track wine butter red meat i don't know anymore right right what i need is buttery hot meat flavored wine Done. <laughs> all everything taken care of in one swig there we go. I think that was ruin them back in the day. Oh, the, uh, okay. The... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it says here, um, if you eat any of these before they are ripe or raw, you will poison yourself with solanine. Solanine? Solanine. Uh, <laughs> never heard of that. Uh, solanine was uh, seven of nines. Never mind. I'm not going to. It was a bad Star Trek joke. Cooking them is what breaks down the toxin. Now, you say this about tomatoes, but people eat raw tomatoes all the time, like on burgers yeah. and stuff. So, I, I eat raw tomatoes. We have a... Um, an arrow garden in the kitchen and it's three to or two tomato plants that really quite frankly have gotten a little unruly mm. there uh you know usually this thing is like a little self-contained garden and uh but we're growing cherry tomatoes on there these things have extended beyond but because there are tomatoes on those branches that come out yeah we we don't cut them down we wait until the branches are oh. We wait until the tomatoes are done, then we cut the branches down. Gotcha. But this thing is out of control. It's out of control. Mm. Yeah, nature anyway. doesn't care what you think. It just wants to grow and keep growing. Right, exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's like a anyway, bad fungus. So, but anyway. yeah, raw tomatoes, not a problem at all with solanine. I guess it's probably a much lower um, oh, concentration. It must, it must be, right? It would have to be. Yeah. Because I've I've seen people eat entire tomatoes, just a just a raw tomato, like eat it like an apple, and mm -hmm. they didn't die. So anyway, I need some clarification on that bit, Nikki. But anyway, moving on says this bonus. Uh, cool stories linked to this include a French royal placing guards around a field of potatoes in the Middle Ages, where they first, or sorry, where they were first brought to Europe, and locals didn't want to eat them because of the poison. Uh, but since they are guarded, they thought that they were valuable and stole them, and eventually figured out a way that we could cook them and eat them. So that's interesting. A little uh, potato history for you. Yeah. It says the belladonna plant is also a nightshade family plant and grows deadly berries. Back in the day, women would put a drop of belladonna berry juice in their eyes to get black pupils and thus be Ooh. more beautiful. Oh, yeah. Because the first thing I think of when I think of that Limp Biscuit uh, guitarist is how beautiful he was <laughs> with his all black, giant black eyes. Yeah. I'm it thinking of the right guy, right? Limp Biscuit is the guitarist? I, uh,. I think that sounds right. You're probably yeah. right. That's funny. West though. Borland. Yes. Thank you. Uh, evil eyes. There you yeah. go. It says sometimes these would kill the women though. So don't don't be putting those berries in your eyes either. Don't be doing that. Uh, Belladonna <laughs> sounds like uh, something else. What does that sound it's like? It's a song by um, Herman's Hermits. Belladonna. Uh, no, maybe Gary Lewis and the Playboys. Old '60s song. Oh, okay. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. I don't know if that 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 probably isn't what you're thinking of, but that's what I think. It's like a Harry Potter person or something. Bella, that, right? Oh, Bellatrix. Oh, uh, Bellatrix Lestrange. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Or Lestrange, as I read it, and then later in the movies they told me Strange. Right. It was Lestrange. Yeah. I yeah. thought it was like Doctor Strange. Heart like album. Yeah. <laughs> I'm reading um, some DC books, and I'm continually thrown off by uh, there being a Doctor Strange in the DC universe. Uh, mm -hmm. It just throws me off. It's like yeah, Captain Marvel, another one. Yeah, it's all weird. It's, it's so weird. all very weird. So it's clear anyway. you just hate Marvel. I get it now. Yeah, it's you finally, get it. it's finally uh, completely 
clear. Yeah, uh, what's now going I'm just on saying here? it out loud. It used to be I would hold that in, but now I'm just going to say it. I hate <laughs> Marvel. Not true. Okay, one more quick little add-on here, and then we're going to play Battle Royale. And today we got a big yeah. one, so stick around for that and get your phones ready, everybody. Talk of Sleep. This came from Cornwall Hugh, which is a cool name. It's I, a it's a it's a cool name. I can't believe it's real because there's a Hugh Cornwall that is the lead singer of the Stranglers. Oh, really? And uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh well, maybe this person's but, a fan. This guy's just reversed out Cornwall Hugh. Maybe he's a fan. I don't Cornwell, know. Cornwell, Hugh Cornwell is the. Oh, okay. Well, this guy's Cornwall. Better off. Yeah. He says, "Talk of sleep. You guys are talking about things to do when you're having a lack of sleep." Does anyone actually count uh, count sheep like the old stories used to describe? <laughs> Do you think that actually works at all? Would it be worth trying? Says Cornwall Hugh. I've never once tried to count a sheep. I I sometimes count, like I'll yeah. go, you know, one, two, just like to focus on something. But exactly. I'm not, yeah. It feels like the work of picturing an actual sheep, <laughs> <laughs> which might. Which would absolutely take your mind off of, oh, I need to get that piece of art done for so-and-so, and and I need to make sure I respond back to such and such. Um, So thinking about sheep probably does that secondary duty of of making your mind focus on something that isn't counting and thinking about what you have to do tomorrow. Mm. So there's probably something to that. Yeah, yeah, probably. Because then you're, because, well, it just feels like I'd be distracted by the visual of the sheep and yeah but but again you know that's a mundane right repetitive that's true you always think of the same thing too right it's always a fence a short wooden fence and the sheep are one at a time jumping over the fence as you're counting them that's true don't do it so that you're under the sheep (laughs) because if you're under the sheep sheep poo all the time they just non-stop pooper machines and you don't want to think about that see this is the problem my brain goes places that it's not supposed to. Brian Brian yeah. described a very simple little cartoon fence, little cartoon sheep. Yeah. Leap, because leap, I was in some cartoon, put it into yeah. my head when I was a kid, and that was that's forever going to be the counting sheep animation. Right. The animated but, GIF. And I'm gonna think the whole time I'm thinking, what if one of these is really a goat and it snuck in <laughs> and it's part of the thing? <laughs> like my brain goes places, and that's the problem with me. So I'm not sure this would work for me, but Cornwall Hugh, we hope it works for you. Okay? Go count those sheep. Brian, yes. Now's your now's your time to shine. We're gonna <laughs> it's double the number of Brian's on this show. Yeah, we have two uh, today, and uh, yeah. let me pull the other one in because when he comes in, gloves are off. Uh, <laughs> That's right. It's fighting time. Uh, I we're keep gonna... meaning to tell you, we've got a uh, Shane Maddox put together a uh, a new theme for Tad Pooley feud, and I need to get it to you to uh, to check out. Oh yeah, send it to me. I'd be happy to check it out. For now, there's this. Join us now for a little Babel Royale or f- feud. What is it? What's the feud one uh, called? Tad Pooley feud. Tad Pooley feud. Uh, Brian Dunaway joins us to participate in said event. Hello, Brian. Oh, hi, Scott and Brian. Hi. Oh, it's nice to hear you. Is voice. it? Yeah. Choose what's the day. What's the what's the even? <laughs> today is Wednesday. Is it Tuesday? Wednesday? It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Wednesday. And you know how Wednesday. you know because you and I did a, a boop show last night and it was great. People should go listen to it. We had a real good time. We um, had such a good time. It's always fun, but last night was exceptionally fun. I think it's because Scott was so well rested from not spending all of his juice on the TMS yesterday. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, I see. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I do spend a lot of juice on this show, for sure. You do spend a lot of juice. Lots yeah. of juice. Lots of Don't juice. Don't wheeze the juice. Don't wheeze the juice. <laughs> By the way, yeah. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a potato denier. What do you mean? Oh, really? What do you mean? Wow. I'm just kidding. I don't know. You eat raw I've potatoes done, I, like, uh, like there's no tomorrow. I've eaten raw potatoes before, and I agree. It's not good for you. Don't do it. However, I do, I'm not going to spread misinformation. Let's just say I've read a lot of stuff, and I still can't make it out. It's like you shouldn't eat potatoes ever, or don't eat them when they're, they're green. You have to cook them this long. And it's like, well, how many can kill you? Well, a normal person has to eat 20. I'm like, I'm not going to eat 20. No, or you're never like in a 20. 24-hour time frame. And I'm like, but... <laughs> Yeah, but then some people are more sensitive to it. Sure, I've never heard anything about potatoes being bad for you, other than this raw business. But you know, it's frying them. It's it's how you prepare them that's good or bad, right? Right. But also, you you don't want to. You also don't want to have too much of a. It's it's a big starch, so you want to like. It's not the kind of vegetable you want to 
overdue. You want to overdo well, it. Well, I'm not going to argue with anybody that is that there's poison in it and that it could be unhealthy. Yeah. Absolutely. Probably so. How... To what degree do we need to concern ourselves with it? So I just stop eating potatoes entirely? I don't know. There's this. I don't know. I wish somebody would just tell me. No, be done with the potatoes. You've me. had a good run. It was all the chips you ate <laughs> yeah. and the whatever. I'm just you've, done with them. You've, yeah, yeah, you've had a good run. Don't I'm eating stress. all corn. Nice. That One can't potato, be bad for you. Two potato, three potato, none <laughs> yeah. is the way Brian Dunaway <laughs> sings that song. That's the long he says. I'm going to eat all corn. That can't be bad for you. Yeah, I'm sure it's not. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. We are now in a, in a in a real pinch. Not a pinch. Not, this is all. I'm making that up. We're going to play a game. And uh, the reason it's yeah. a pinch is because Brian and I are going to have to go head to head here. We have a listener on the line who will participate with us today and hopefully walk away with some prizes. Let's find out who's been holding so patiently. Hello. Who's this? Hi, guys. Is this Potato Cast? It's Potato Cast. Whoa. Welcome to the Potato Welcome Cast. Potato Cast. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You're, the, you're the next Hi, guest this- on Potato Cast. Who's this? <laughs> Yeah. This is Jay Funktastic from the Nerd Cave Retro. Oh, oh yeah. man! Oh wow! Jay Funktastic, I like that guy. Well, good. Uh, that means that you have a chance to win some stuff, and that would make me happy. But only if Brian can explain how the hell this works. So, Brian, explain away. Fine, I'll do it. It's time to play the Tadpooly feud. <laughs> I've surveyed the Tadpool on some nerdy topics, and Scott and Brian will have to predict the answers that they gave us. It's uh, Scott and Brian's job to see how many of those answers they can guess. Jay Funktastic, your job is too, uh, your job is more important than ever because you're going to be working with either Scott or Brian. If your team wins, you will get a prize package that includes a bag of Kahawa coffee from Kahawa Coffee Roasters and Total Tank Simulator. Not just partial tank simulator, oh. but total tank simulator whoa, mm, whoa. Uh, courtesy of wesley people like those tanks yeah people like tanks yes. they're big complicated pieces of machinery they want to drive one and shoot a nazi so they look cool from the outside and that's all we ever usually see but i would hate to be inside a tank looks yeah. like it'd be uncomfortable you know where would be a bummer is getting uh, all tangled up in those treads that'd be trouble yeah mm. see that's part of the total tank simulator you don't you don't <laughs> it's not just oh i'm in the cockpit yeah. No, no, it's there's a part of the game where you're tangled up in the treads. Mm-hmm. There's uh, one you know part where you're you're uh, dangling from the butt of the tank. Right, right. There's around. one where you put. You, well, how did you get? How, wait, wait. How did you get hung up like that? <laughs> right. You weren't sticking your member in the tube, were you? Right. No, no, I was okay. I was fighting Indiana Jones and I slipped <laughs> and I fell and I got uh, part of my belt <laughs> stuck on a protruding uh, part of the oh, tank. Oh, finally, we have an off. explanation for that. Well done. Yes. Uh, all right. You know what makes for a great noise for uh, for Indiana Jones for slapping somebody? What? It's like a sack of potatoes, isn't that it's what they a do? Sack of potatoes or a watermelon? I thought a wet, they punched like, like a, a like a big wet side watermelon. Of beef. A, wet, a wet hand on a watermelon. <laughs> isn't it a wet hand on a be- on like a beef swaying? I always pictured a big piece of beef, like a like half a, a cow, like a frozen side of beef. Yeah, and then somebody with a big old hammy fist just. Flack. But that doesn't fit in with my potato cast. It no, it doesn't. Whatever. doesn't bring back potato cast. Sorry. No, that sorry. that show's pod faded. Yep. It's over. It's out. Podcast alley times. <laughs> Legacy. Legacy <laughs> podcast. <laughs> potato cast. Yep. All right. All right. You guys need a, uh, let's give you guys a topic. Sure. Uh, what is the greatest video game franchise of all time? Now, when you say greatest. Brian buzzes in and says... Oh, oh, we already started. Oh, yeah. I didn't know we in. were going already. Oh, I thought I thought they had to choose. I thought we was going to choose who we wanted to go with, and a whole bunch of other stuff we still had to do. No, yeah. no, you buzzed in when I asked that question, and that's how we decide who. All right, Jake then I'm going to go in. with uh, Super Mario, the Mario, Mario franchise. All right, show me Mario. It is oh, the number one answer. No answer. Yes, it, which means you get. Uh, you know, normally we'd say you get a chance to pass or play, but it doesn't matter in this one. You get to play until you get a buzz, and then it goes to Scott. Mm-hmm. So, at this point, Jay Fungtastic, you are going to be working with Scott, oh. and uh, he's going to be your teammate on right. uh, on this okay. game. How's that feel? You good with that? You all right with that? I, I, I'm good with that. Okay. Oh, and by the way, wet hand on a side of beef was my finishing move. Oh, back fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. i got to wet my hand. <laughs> oh, very good. Uh, they are not hearing the sounds, Scott. Can you? Yeah, I'll fix oh, no. it. We're, we're good now. I heard I, it. I screwed it up. It's, it's me. I, it'll work this next time. Okay, good. All right. Yeah. So, Brian, you get to continue until you get a strike. All right. Then I'm going to go with the Sonic franchise. The Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. 
Show me. Oh, are you oh, kidding me? Nobody no. said the Sonic franchise? Because it's you not one funny? of the best. It sucks in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's funny. Even <laughs> like if you get down to ones and twos, still no Sonic in this list. That is insane. Nobody said Sonic. Yeah. Brian, and I only got Sonic in my brain because I was you, looking at some Sonic stuff earlier. So You know why, I'm, though. I'm it's because it's not great. There are moments, but it's not great. We're talking mm. greatest franchise here. You can't just give That's right. Sonic. Well, there's 10, so I figured, you know, there's not that many great franchises. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I was wrong. So it's my turn, right? Or does he get... Oh, no, it's he keeps... your turn, and you get to work with Jay Funktastic to uh, come up with an answer. All right, Jay. Let's do something good. What are you, what are you feeling? Like, I, I could go... I could go... Um, as... I'm going to say Legend of Zelda. Oh, that's yeah. That's oh, that's duh. a good one. Duh! Ooh. I should have said that. Can yeah, I say that have. now? No, you can't. But oh. we can. So, Legend, of, show me Legend of Zelda. <laughs> show me Legend of Zelda. Number two, Number two answer oh, on the board. Yes, very good. It. How did I not get that? Yeah. Well, it's because yeah. you're, you know, whatever. Zelda in that cool green costume, waving, waving his sword around. It's such a great game. Mm -hmm. With that. Zelda and his sword and, and his sword, his boomerang yeah. and his yeah. uh, his tools. If it's digging, Hookshot. if it's digging on you, <laughs> he's talking because that guy's name is Link. Yeah, you get exactly, it? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. We get it. Uh, all all right. right, so we keep going. You right? You guys have control of the board. You get to keep going until you get a strike. Uh, um, st I was still st uh, my brain's still in the Nintendo space. Okay. Yeah. Feels like we could say Metroid. Jay, what do you think? Oh. Uh, yeah, I think Metroid's a good pick. All right, we're going Metroid. It's a great pick. Very good. <laughs> Show me Metroid. Damn it. Yes. Oh. Really? Ooh. Yes. Are Suck you it, Johnson. You thought you were me. so. Oh, can I do that? Can I smack talk during? <laughs> I don't know. Feud? I wouldn't. Uh, you know, I wouldn't uh, smack talk too much there, uh, Sonic. Oh, okay. Yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, okay. Sonic lover. So uh, sometimes you just you know, have to make a couple of fumbles so that you can uh, understand right. the right. the the thought the process of the right of the, you of the contestants. Mm -hmm. You can't bowl down the lane until you know where the gutters are. Yeah. Right, found it. Here Look, it is. The even, gutter. Even yep. is it my turn now? Yes. I'm a little mm -hmm. fuzzy on the on the rules. It is your turn, Brian Dunaway. Give me an answer. Okay, so Give me we're an not answer. we're not going. Greatest is not defined by number because of, obviously. Correct. Correct. Because uh, I said Sonic and... This is, the opinion, so, this is the opinion of the listening audience. Right. So I'm going to say uh, Call of Duty Call is of Duty. A, beloved, a beloved franchise. Surely we'll try the other gutter. We'll try for the left gutter this time to see it. <laughs> Show me Call of Duty. Oh my oh. God! Left gutter located. You got to think of this audience. Me? You have to think of the audience we're talking to. I you. am. That's what I was trying to do. These guys are uh, COD players. Audience. These for guys the record, are... uh, four yeah. people uh, said Call of Duty. That would have put it at uh, tied for eleventh place in Holy our list. Holy Moses! Mm -hmm. Now I don't know anything. Well, I'm going to say Jay. I think we say. I mean, thinking of the crowd we got here. I think we can count um, Warcraft, right? Like, can't we say Warcraft and then all the way up no, through World of? That's smart. That's smart. Don't you think people would do that? Because we're talking tadpoolers here. A lot of you're right. That's smart. A lot of Blizzard fans. Yeah, I have another franchise too that um, I oh. I'm not a huge fan of, but I know that you should say like it, it and then not use it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I'm going to leave that up to you. If you want to say Warcraft, I'm good with that. All right, let's go Warcraft and hold on to the money you got because I think we're going to need it. Let's say Warcraft. All right, show me Warcraft. Oh, number, oh, three. number three answer on the board. Really? Dag, okay. Holy okay. ball think is of the back audience. Down. Okay. Think of <laughs> I see where audience. these guys are going. That's right. All I right. see where these guys are going. Scott now. and Jay Funktastic, you guys still have control. All right, what was that one you were hanging on to? Well, I was thinking um, possibly the Pokemon series. Oh, yeah. Oh, Pokemon. that's a good one. That's going to be totally accurate to the audience. Then? The question is whether they would think of this. I, I'm going to say, yeah, that's a that's a solid one. It's got to be in the top ten. We'll say Pokemon. Okay. Show me Pokemons. Oof. Number ten. <laughs> oh, boy. Ooh, we tail Five into people this. said Pokemon. And I, I wasn't one of them, one. believe it or not. <laughs> you just barely picked up that spare, man. Mm, that's right. Uh, now, now I'm nervous. 
Yeah. Assassin's Creed. Ooh, that's a good one. Assassin's Creed. All right, show me Assassin's Creed number seven. Nice. In the list. Very good. Okay. Oh, Jay, help me here. What else do we need? We can how about, do. Uh, how about Final Fantasy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Final oh, Fantasy. Oh, that's a good one. I was going to use that one, so mm. that sucks. All right. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Show me Final Fantasy. Would Brian have gotten points for Final Fantasy? Indeed yeah. he would. Yeah. Number four on the list. 18 people said Final Fantasy. All right. I'm still still pretty sure we got this Warcraft thing was a good sign being number three. Um, so I'm going to say I'm going to recommend we go Diablo. On yeah, this. yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Diablo. Yeah. Right. Show me Diablo. Oh. Number nine. Oh. Uh, see, this is only good if we get them all. If we miss one, then... I know, that's right. right. I'm, gonna, exactly. I'm just sitting here with my perfect answer. Well, I feel like uh, numerically, there's no way for Brian to catch up points-wise, but... Uh, <laughs> Because that is where it comes. Oh, down yeah, that's to. right. We are doing. Is that points. what you think? Yeah. 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 Is but, that what you think? But is... let's you know, let's uh, let's <laughs> pretend that there's some uh, <laughs> some that, danger. In this is game. that what you think as curator and host of your own of your own game uh, game show? Yeah, segment? that's what I think. That's okay. what I think. Okay. Those those numbers are for. Although okay. <laughs> this game has changed so much since <laughs> we first introduced it. That <laughs> you could show this to the corpse of of Richard. What's his name? Richard Dawson. Richard Dawson. He go. I don't know what this is. That's what he'd say. <laughs> so, um, give me a kiss. Let's see. Yeah, give me a kiss. He'd say first. All right. Let's do. Um, um, feeling strong about. Um, oh, now now it's left me. Oh. Oh, I was gonna say uh -oh. Metal Gear. The Metal Gear series has to be here, right? Right. Metal Gear. So. What do you think, Jay? Metal Gear. Um. <sighs> Metal Gear. I, I, I would say Halo. <laughs> What'd you say? Sorry, Brian talked. Uh, I said I would say Halo. Oh, Halo. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, you know what? Halo. Halo. All right. Show me Hello. Oh, oh good answer. Ooh, good dance. answer. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you've got control again. <laughs> Does he ever oh, crap, I forgot control. what we were talking about. All right. Um, I'm going to go the opposite direction. And uh, since there's no way I can win anyway, numerically, apparently, mm -hmm. from right. the creator You're of the game. eliminated, but still. Uh... Then I'm just going to go ahead and say Mega Man then. Mega Man. No way. All right, man. There. I'm going to predict man. it is not on there. Go for it. Mega Man. Uh, show me <laughs> Mega Man. Oh, oh, I ran the board. Yeah, you, ran you the board. did. I'm going to guess these others, can I? Yep, absolutely. Uh, metal. Can we try Metal Gear? Yeah, say Metal Gear again. Metal, that's a really metal good Gear. idea. Oh, no, no, that's right. You said Halo instead of Metal Gear. Yeah. That's right. So I'm saying Metal uh, Gear. Metal Gear. No. Oh. I should have taken <laughs> that as a hint. Um, How about Pac-Man? Hold on. Don't say Pac-Man. That's not going to be on there. What about Pac-Man? Not Pac-Man? Not Pac-Man? Popeye? Ow. There was a Popeye video game, but we can't get that. All right, let's say um, uh, uh, Kirby. <laughs> Kirby. Let's How about say... the Age of Empires? Who are these people we're talking to? Oh, the All right, Age let's of show Empires. You. Number, show me number five. Oh, how do I do this? Let's see. I just click on it. No, I guess I click on your name and and we just show it. Uh, all right, show me number five. Fallout. Fallout. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Fallout, Fallout, of course. Big fan. Uh, Big show fan me number fan. six. Elder, Elder Scrolls. Scrolls. Duh. I almost didn't say that. Duh. Uh, and show me number eight. Oh, oh man, GTA, Auto. Actually, I did have this in my head at one point in time, and I totally forgot uh, it. Freaking yeah, those, that's, So many games have come out for that one. Well, we uh, still won. That's the but beauty. But we didn't go by number, remember? Because I said Sonic, and I was like, okay, Sonic. Because Sonic sucks. Sonic freaking sucks. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. But the good news is, Jay, you won, dude. How do you feel about your tank simulator and your coffee? How's that feel? Uh, I feel fantastic. Oh, man, that's awesome. Yeah. All you got to do okay. is email Brian, Coverville, gmail.com, and he will hook you up. Uh, Send me your mailing guys. address when you email me, and I'll reply with your code and uh, forward your email address on to Kahawa Roasters. Delicious Kahawa coffee. Yeah. 
It's good stuff, that stuff. It is good stuff. Uh, That's good stuff. Uh, good yeah, stuff, some other ones stuff. that didn't, that were just under uh, Bioshock, Animal Crossing, Dark Souls. Animal Crossing. Yeah, it's still pop. People are thinking about it. Is it? Yeah, but it's still popular, Brian. People love Animal uh, Crossing. Dragon, it's Dragon huge, Age, Half Life. Yeah. Metal Gear Half-Life. Salt was. Uh, uh, There's only two. Three people said that one. Um, Pac Man, Red Dead Redemption, Border. The more I hear this list, the more I'm convinced that I'm right and these people were wrong. <laughs> Yes. I mean, anyway. look, you were only wrong. You were only really wrong once. And right, that was Sonic. exactly. That was Sonic. Was Sonic, yeah. Because yeah. everything else you said was good. But that's really, a bad really video wrong. game. Bad video game series. One, two, and a little bit of Knuckles and Tails and Knuckles or whatever the hell it was called, the third one. Mm-hmm. That was good. They were okay. That one was okay. First two games were great. Everything since then, kind of garbage. CD, mm-hmm. Sonic CD, very good. Uh, but that's just because it's more like traditional Sonic. And then recently there was that Sonic Mania thing, which was like a really great return to form. Everything else in between, shit sandwich, man. Bad video games. Bad. I was the only person who said Sonic. Nobody in the at all. Nobody. 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 Nobody in the Tadpool survey. Uh, 200 people surveyed. Not one of them said Sonic. I am disappointed in you people. Yeah. yeah well, you know. A Sonic sandwich One person has good even bread. said pass. They could have said Sonic, <laughs> and they just said pass. <laughs> I could like, say something. I'm going to say nothing at all is still a better answer than that's Sonic. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, you know what that yes. reminds me of? I had somebody on Twitter the other day. No offense to him, because he and I kind of talked it out, so it's not a big deal. I'm not going to say names, yeah. but... I'd put up a thing saying, what are you guys hoping to hear from Blizzard at this month's BlizzCon line thing that Mm -hmm, they're doing? mm -hmm. And uh, people are coming back with next patch info, Diablo 4 stuff, like all these things. Shorter Torghast. Shorter (laughs) Torghast. Those sorts of things. And then this one guy just says, Blizzard's dead to me. And I'm like, well, why did you, (laughs) why do you have to say it? Yeah, why comment? Yeah, why? If they're dead to you, they're clearly they're not dead. To right. you, is it going to change somebody's mind? They're going to say, "Oh, you know, I was looking for new information about the patch, but you're right. Blizzard is dead to me." <laughs> so anyway, he and I talked it out, and it's fine. He was just yeah. expressing some frustration. Sometimes yes. you you have to just dig a little deeper, and we found we found each other in the middle. All right, Brian, well done. You uh, you did yeah. terribly, but that's well great. Well done. I lost. I said Sonic for God's sake. <laughs> you sure did, but that's okay because next Monday you get a chance. This of game is dead to me. Yeah, this game is dead to you. <laughs> but Monday you get a new shot. Look at think of that. It's yeah, like rebirth. Exactly. It's like exactly. uh, I don't know. What's it like? It's like uh, it's like it a, can't go. It can't get any worse. It can't get any worse. <laughs> that's exactly right. So I, I here personally, I believe in you and uh, look forward to that very much. So also, everybody should check out that boop show we did last night. And while you're at it, Film Sack this weekend, it'll be Sunday this weekend. But we are doing. Oh, I forgot what we're doing. Uh, oh, for uh, Film Sack, it's 12 monkeys. 12 monkeys. 12 monkeys. 12 monkeys. Ripped 12 monkeys. from today's headlines. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, really looking forward to it because I loved yeah. it when I first saw it. So I do, I do too. It's, it feels like a. Uh, a time travel movie that still does it wrong, but somehow gets it right. There you, there you go. And that's a lot coming from I've, you. And this will be my first viewing completely all the way through. I've Whoa. seen it, parts of it, multiple times. Uh, I don't but know I've how. never set that's I've never weird. set all the way through. It's, oh, it's, that feels like a, such a such a disservice to the movie to see that one in piecemeal, right? Because it's like I know. It's, it needs to be seen all at once. We'll we'll see if it increases my enjoyment of the movie by sitting mm-hmm. with my eyes, uh, you know, popped open with some toothpicks. We'll nope, see. Different movie. Different movie. Oh, that's oh, that's the that's, <laughs> that's the, that's the, <laughs> that's the that's the that's the other movie, right? It's Clockwork Orange. Maybe that's, that's the one you're orange, thinking. Yeah. You've seen bits and pieces of. Mm. Yeah, could be. Well, we'll see. We'll find out together when Brad Pitt flips off people behind their backs this weekend (laughs) on 12 Monkeys. Brian Dunaway, stay safe. We'll see you later. Stay safe. Dice Tomato. I've done the same with 12 Monkeys. Can never get interested in it. Dice Tomato, really? I can't believe that's him Dice Tomato, I know. Exactly. Like, he's only seen four of the monkeys. And how can you enjoy that movie (laughs) with such a portion such a small portion of monkeys yeah if you've only seen i mean even if you've seen 11 of the monkeys you're still not getting the full 12 monkeys no experience. you need all 12 you need all 12 monkeys i never watched that um uh tv shows based on it did you ever watch any of that oh there was a tv show but no i did not i didn't watch any of it it was rated well it was an fx was. joint yeah. people liked it um yeah i think that's gone now but i never saw mm-hmm. it all right uh <clears throat> that's it for that 
We have a little bit of time for news. And so sit back and enjoy the following news program. Oh, that didn't work. Let me try that again. <laughs> hit the fade out before I hit the thingy thingy. Anyway, <laughs> hey, it's time for the news brought to you by... Scott, I just can't get enough from you about that space game where you salvage ships for huge amounts of money and shove parts of it into the furnace hole and sometimes blow yourself up in the process. Where, oh, where can I get more of this? Well, uh, I played some on stream last night for people who wanted to watch me do this, and it was lots of fun. It was great hanging out with you guys and chatting with you. I find that game to be very cathartic and a great sort of just sit and chat with the with the chat room kind of game. Uh, plus, I just am addicted to it. Anyway... If you want more, I want more coverage of what I think about that and many other issues in and around the gaming world, uh, check out two podcasts on the network. There's The Boop Show, which just talked about me and Dunaway. We do indie games on that show. And Core, which happens on Thursday nights at 5 p.m. Mountain Time if you want to watch it live. And that's where me and John Jagger and Bo Schwartz talk about the broader world of video games, the big boys, the big titles, the big mm. stuff. Uh, so more for you every day at Core and Boop, both at frogpants.com. All right. Brian Target. Yes. You know them? They're the... Uh, I do. They're the other uh, place that I can't get PlayStation 5s from. That's right. All the places Brian can't get uh, PlayStation <laughs> 5s, Target is one of those. Target is one of them. I was on uh, Costco's site uh, last last week and couldn't get a... No, a couple days ago. Yeah. Couldn't get a PlayStation Still 5. Still couldn't. Well, good news. Target has joined Costco, your other place that you can't get a PlayStation. Uh-huh. Yep. In dropping coconut milk brand... Over forced monkey labor allegations. Oh, those are they using twelve monkeys? They only used eleven. This is the problem. Ah, uh, that's why you need a full labor force of twelve monkeys. Otherwise, uh, what are you even doing? doing? If you don't have more. a full set of twelve, what are you doing? <laughs> right, exactly. Target yes. is the latest company to drop Choka Kako Chaoko. I don't Chaoko. know. Co <laughs> Uh, coconut milk, it's a brand of coconut milk, over allegations of forced monkey labor. I just love the term forced monkey labor. <laughs> forced monkey labor! <laughs> People of the, or for the ethical treatment of animals, or PETA, uh, said the retailer will no longer sell the product because of its alleged ties to monkey labor. Do the, do the monkeys have a union, or that's the problem, is they don't have a union? <laughs> that's right. They don't have a union is yeah. the problem. Yeah. Somebody get Chippy in here. We got to make it a deal with the fat cats of Wall Street. I don't know how monkeys <sighs> negotiate. Anyway, uh, it says here, uh, Chokra Thai supplier is accused of forcing monkeys to pick coconuts from trees. That's, what, that's how they're using the labor. Why don't they just use Keith Richards like a normal company? <laughs> Didn't Keith Richards fall out of a coconut tree? One monkey. Land on his... He's known as one monkey, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Years ago, I think he fell out of a coconut Did tree. Did he really? Yeah. I don't remember yeah. hearing about that. Was it just he was... Someone someone in the chat room will find a link. Keith was Richards, I'm sure. I'm sure I'm remembering this like in the late 90s, was climbing up a coconut tree and fell out. Was he like in a like on a trip, like on a vacation and just... I'm sure he was, and he's like... I'll bet I can get that coconut. <laughs> hold my hold my cigarette. And then he climbed up there. Imagine the things that guy's seen in his life. Oh, I can't even imagine. I mean, or the things he's imagined he's seen. That's probably even worse. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's a good point. Probably um, walked in on <clears throat> Mick changing or something. And, oh, good Lord, I uh, need another cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> the new McDonald's Mick changing. All right. There we go. Captain Kipper found found oh, it. Is there uh, a story about it? Oh, well, yeah. Richards concussed after fall from coconut tree. Let's see. Maybe that's when they started using monkeys. Like, they're, like, deciding at that point, nope, let's do uh Oh, yeah, look at that. Let's, let's... 2009. Oh, okay, way more recent than I thought. I thought it was in the 90s. Oh, okay. Yeah, he would have been... Let's see, how old was he then? He would have been... I think it says 62. 62 when he did that? Yeah. That was nine. That was 11 years ago. Oh, or no, sorry, I take that back. Ago. 62 uh, is when he fell off a ladder trying to retrieve a book in the library of his Connecticut mansion. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where oh, is... man. I want to be his neighbor in Connecticut. <laughs> Somebody just takes Hold on. Cookies. I think I do have that copy of Ivanhoe. Let me get it. No! <laughs> <laughs> Ivanhoe. Why? <laughs> Why is it Ivanhoe? Why did you choose a, that? That's a funny book. That's a really funny book to say. I agree. 
I can't deny uh, that. I can't. You know, it's funny. They talk about how he was. Oh, okay. He was 62 for this, but then they just say in 1998, they, he fell off a ladder. So, yeah, he was 62 at this time. Oh, okay. So they were just recalling an earlier event. Right, Is exactly. But he okay. was still 62 at this at this time. So 11 years ago or 12 years ago. Okay. So he's 70 what now? Four or five or something? Yeah, to 74 or 75, depending okay. on oh. when. One day he is going to die, though, right? He will die. <laughs> I saw that one. I saw you hit your microphone. I there, keep Scott. doing this. Gosh dang it. I moved you need it, to so... suspend it from the ceiling like a boom. A well, boom I used mic. to have it up and over. The problem was I was like I was looking through it, yeah, and the camera was yeah. and all that. So I'm like, well, all right, bring it down here. And now every time I don't think about it, I hit it. And, I, mm -hmm. and, and the worst part is when I hit it, it goes, er, and the trajectory is er, right into my Changes. face. Yeah, yeah. Effing thing. Anyway. Oh, no. Oh, no. We talked about Keith Richards. Scott, what's going to happen to Keith Richards? Oh, we're going to kill him. That's what's going to happen. He's going to die. You know, if there's anybody we can't kill, it's going to be Keith Richards. Seems Actually, like. Actually. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> like we talked about Abe Vigoda a lot before he died. And, uh, yeah, but, exactly. and I'd like to remind everybody, we talked about Betty White like two weeks ago, and she's still fine. Yeah. So Bob Barker we talked about. Yeah. And he's still around. He's still around. Yep. Which I which surprised me because I thought he was dead multiple times. I thought he was dead. We didn't kill Dustin Diamond, Benjamin. No, we didn't even bring him up. No, did we? I don't think we mentioned Screech at all. Oh, we did. We talked about the uh, we talked about the new Saved by the Bell. Oh, and we said uh, they didn't series. know if they were going to get Screech and we said on that there. He's, he's like the one person who's not involved in the new Saved by the Bell series. Yeah, and the reason it was is that he just he's kind of controversial. He's had some 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 problems. Yeah. Unrelated to the cancer. The cancer was actually very quick. He got diagnosed and then died pretty quick. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's not our fault. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's fix this. Fault. Martin Shkreli, Martin Shkreli, Martin Shkreli, Martin Shkreli. Okay. Let's move on. <laughs> Monkeys, coconuts. He'll be shanked in the bathroom by noon. It'll be fine. <laughs> Uh, all right, so by dropping this brand, Target is joining thousands of stores that refuse to profit from chained monkeys. Misery, they say here. Uh, uh, according to PETA, 26,000 stores, including uh, chains Wegmans, Food Lion, and Stop and Shop, have cut ties with the coconut milk brand. Uh, the company has denied the allegations, previously said it audited its coconut plantations using a third party, and found no use of monkeys for coconut harvesting. Other stores have already dropped the product, including Costco. Well, there you go. I've had this milk. It was all right. Oh, really? Yeah. That, this exact brand? Yeah. Carter likes, uh, she likes the, the alternate milk. She likes rice mm -hmm. milk. She likes uh, this stuff. I like stuff. a good almond milk. Yeah, almond milk. I that, had some oat milk the other day in a, in a coffee at a uh, at a hipster bookstore, album store, coffee shop, and it was really good. Mm. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind the alternatives, mm -hmm. uh, especially as just like a creamer alternative or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go and just get a nice tall glass of it. That'd be weird. No, but, but pouring it on your Cheerios is, isn't so bad. Kim uses almond milk on her amazing corn chowder. Oh, man. Ooh. It's yeah, so that's good. good. We use that. Right. We do that in our, our milk-based uh, soups as well. And what's good about that is the milk, if you do regular milk, those a bowl of that soup just bloats me for days. Like, it's just mm -hmm. too much. The coconut milk or the uh, almond milk, for whatever reason, doesn't do that at all because uh, it's not dairy, I guess. And I can eat like three bowls of that. So I don't know if this is good or bad. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't <laughs> eat that much. <laughs> no, when I have milk, it sounds like uh, Chuck Yeager flying through uh, the Snowbird uh, <laughs> Resort. Breaking the sound barrier. Breaking the sound barrier, exactly. <laughs> they still call me about that. They, uh, in 2013, it seems you ruined things. <laughs> Yes, nothing about stolen towels mm -mm. or, uh, you know, <laughs> bras hanging on uh, elevator. No, nope, uh, none of that. Railing, none of that. They talk about the guy who came and farted in the ballroom. <laughs> yep, they can't get it out. They don't know what to do. Right in front of that Steve Young painting. Oh, yeah, they get that big Steve Young painting in the basement mm -hmm. thing. Isn't that weird? Yep. It's weird. Well, it's not that weird. We're, we were... Steve Young coming from BYU, going to play for the 49ers, and then having a, having killer seasons with the 49ers yeah. was a big deal for locals. So I guess it's not for that sure. weird. That's for fine. sure. He was a local hero, that guy. Um, Scott, tell me about James Bond. Yeah, check this out. No Time to Die, which keeps getting pushed. 
<laughs> yeah. uh, actually had to do reshoots because uh, they now now features out of date product placements. Like Oops. choco cho- uh, coconut milk. Yeah, choco choco co- <laughs> coconut. <laughs> Last week, the official James Bond social media accounts confirmed that No Time to Die will be delayed yet again from April 2nd to October 8th uh, with a film release, or sorry, fifth release date move. Uh, and the fact that Daniel Craig, the Daniel Craig movie was shot almost two years ago, the traditional product placements that have helped finance the blockbuster are facing, or say are facing, uh, being somewhat out of date. After all, Bond always has the latest gadgets and blah, blah, blah. That's a stupid thing. Anyway, uh, Nokia uh, usually is part of this, you know, their, their deal. Mm-hmm. I wonder if yep. they still are. Mm. Uh, let's see. The problem yeah, is that many of these things have moved on to l- more recent models. By the does GameStop, does James Bond go into a GameStop <laughs> at some point? An AMC theater. Uh, <laughs> right, exactly. All the stuff that's yeah. crashing. He uses, uh, uh, does he, hold on, uh, M, I'm getting, I'm watching a movie on Quibi. Uh, one second, <laughs> I'll be right with you. If they don't hurry up and put this out, though, they're going to have to go back and do reshoots with whole new actors because, my gosh, right. how much longer? <laughs> Two years ago. Yeah. Gosh, dang it. Anyway, uh, so we'll see how that goes. Keep your eyes on the prize. But it's time to take a break. We're not talking about James Bond anymore. It's time to take a break and talk to Tom Merritt after this, the James Bond of tech news. So stick around for that and more. Uh, Brian has a song selection he'll now present to us in the usual fashion. I do. And this is so good. This comes from a listener, Michael Andrews Jr., who wrote in and said, hey, I'm requesting a song by a friend of mine. He's a new artist that has enormous potential. I hope you agree and will consider playing his song on TMS. He goes by Shweky, S-H-W-E-C-K-Y. And the song is called Tambourine featuring Laura Lou. Uh, This is great. This has got that dream pop jangly guitar kind of sound that we really like. Um I really, really dig the song, and I hope we get more from Shweki. Uh, it's time to get Shweki. Here's Tambourine featuring Laura Lou. Captain's Log, star date 5123-1. Using the Star Trek Command Communications Console, Scott and Jim try to contact Steve. Will they succeed? If we can't be sure that it's true, then it must be false. <laughs> The Morning Stream. Rambling goes in, podcast comes out. You can't explain that. My favorite thing about that Star Trek clip was Mm -hmm. Scott and Jim, which could be interchangeable with Scotty and and Jim Kirk, are needing to call Steve on their (laughs) communicator. (laughs) And in the, the commercial, it's three kids... And Scott and Jim are hanging out at home, and Steve has got the remote version of this communicator out on his bike somewhere in the 70s. Oh, funny. Okay. And it just cracks me up that they have to call Steve. They could have named him anything. They could have called him Leonard or freaking some other Star Trek name uh, Uh or character or actor name, and instead they went with Steve, who never shows up in any Star Treks as far as I'm I love it. I totally love it. All right. Steve is Scotty's real first name. It's uh, (laughs) Steve Scott. Steve Scott. Steve Scott. Ah, oh, you need to get down to the surface. Watch Can't help you. Here. Get down there. <laughs> I think we're doing Give it a roll. She's got Captain. Thank you, Steve. I think it's a little Irish what we got going there. Yeah, uh, a little bit. Check this out. With the computer, as with any tool, the concept and direction must come from the man. That man is Tom Merritt. He joins us on Wednesdays, and we talk about the latest tech news before the Daily Tech News Show has a chance to even start. Tom Merritt, welcome to the show. How are you? Oh, I am Irish. Oh, you look at <laughs> You do have Irish blood, oh, right? Isn't that the deal? I do. I do. I have a little Irish, a little Welsh, a little English, yeah. a little Scandinavian. Yeah, they put a little English on that. Uh, Northern European, very bland porridge. Do you uh, but do you get all fired up about uh, I don't know. What, 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 the Irish have a t- uh, have a stereotype. They get all fired up about something. Do you, what are you trying to say, Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> I never see easily it. angered that Irish. Yeah, <laughs> but then he, we quickly forget. Actually, that, that's a funny story. I remember asking Molly Wood once. Mm. Uh, do you have do you by chance have any uh, Irish heritage? And she's like, Yeah, I do. Why? I'm like, Because you're quick to anger and quick to forget. <laughs> 
That sounds about right. Hey, oh. she was on. She was on last Wednesday. That was a really cool discussion about the GameStop stuff. Which, by the way, yeah, feels yeah, like it was nine, great having her on. That feels like nine years ago. The GameStop story, <laughs> doesn't it? it yeah, does. you're right. It I does. had to, I had to think like, was that just a week ago? Like yeah. just a week? Ago? It was just yeah. a week. And in fact, I guess it's still up, but also way down from when it was at its highest. And so there's still discussion about. What, what people are doing and how they're selling and buying and blah blah blah. It does blah, seem blah. to be cooling though. I think uh, I think Gabe Scott's finally down below a hundred dollars a share. But yeah, whether whether it's a here where where I'm at with that whole thing is is this just a could only work once because mm -hmm. the enthusiasm will never be there again because it was new. It was mm -hmm. a fun new thing for everybody to try, right. and the next time it'll be like oh doing that again. I mean oh you guys have fun, you know like mm -hmm. it may never happen again even if they change nothing. Right. Because it could just be a flash in the pan, or is it a new vulnerability in the system that they need to patch? Right. And will right. will we have we heard anything from? I mean I know we've heard like small comments from government types who will just say i think the uh the biden administration made, said some, made some comment like we're watching it very closely which says <laughs> <Yeah>. nothing um, <laughs> that means we don't want you to think we're ignoring it but we're not planning on but doing we're not really yet. doing anything yeah. and then doesn't mean they won't right but yeah right then there are people in congress that are all up in arms and and usual foes who actually agree on this one thing and that sort of thing but none of them are actually presenting legislation there has not or, there have been lots of of proposals from corners far and wide i haven't seen i haven't seen any of them get traction to be like oh this could be the thing they decide to do yeah because it does seem that. like just limiting trading uh probably slowed it down enough to to cause the the embers to to cool down right. uh i i think that it will probably be an industry-led thing rather than a government-led thing uh robin hood's already talking about uh only doing real-time settlements mm. which means in they would they would not uh do that thing where they have the third party settling the trades making a little money off them which is what caused the problem with the trading right because the third party settling trades assumes they can get a better deal but when gamestop was going up and up and up and up and up they couldn't get a better deal so right. they were losing money uh and and i also saw we talked to yesterday on on dtns about a an app called public that is no longer going to use settlements. It's just going to buy direct. So you might see a, a trend for that. Mm -hmm. uh, Public's way of getting around making money off of you know the the order flow uh, is to ask for tips. Yeah, kind of a Patreon like approach. It's interesting. We'll see mm -hmm. if that works. Yeah, I don't think Robinhood's going to do that. But they may they may do something like real time settlements that say we'll let you do margin, we'll let you do option calls, all that. But we we won't cover you. Right. It'll have to. It'll have to be in real time. You know that that all of that is done. Robin will go back to just robbing from the rich and giving to the poor. That's what they'll do. <laughs> I mean, that's I the want name. somebody to start an app called Little John. That's like <laughs> the app. Friar Tuck app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Friar Tuck. A, a yeah, we have a whole, app. Yeah. whole series of Maid like Marian, whole whole gang. Yeah, why not? Um, but base it all on the Disney cartoon because I really like that. Anyway, oh, yeah. hey, uh, so Hood, that was nine years ago. That was like back in the 2010s, so we don't have to think about GameStop anymore. We're going to talk instead about what's current today, uh, uh, literally today, what's happening in the world of tech this morning. <sighs> did you hear uh, Jeff Bezos is out of a job? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, that kind of <laughs> came out of nowhere. Did anyone th know that was happening? Was there, like, leaks yes. ahead? Okay. Uh, I, I had somebody on Twitter like, this is the biggest news of the year. I'm like, well, there was some stuff that happened in January that I think is probably the biggest news, <laughs> news so is COVID. But yeah. it is pretty big news. It was not unexpected. Mm -hmm. Jeff Bezos had already stepped away from day-to-day -day operations. That was huge news when he did that pre-COVID. Yeah. There was another big piece of news when COVID happened that he stepped back in and said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take over some of the day-to-day because this is such a huge challenge and it's such a change to the way we do things. Yeah. Uh, and so this is him saying, I think we've got it under control. I'm finally going to do what I was planning to do, which was slowly step away. But now because he had stepped back in, it feels like a bigger step yeah. that he's becoming executive chair. So he'll still be involved in Amazon. He's going to talk about like new products and new services as executive chair of the board. He still owns a huge chunk of Amazon. But Andy Jassy who ran AWS and is a Harvard business guy, so he can he can run in you know different kinds of businesses, uh, is going to take over the entire show as CEO, and he'll be running the day-to-day. -day. Interesting. Okay. So 
um, him being executive chair. I mean, I heard a very cynical take yesterday that I'll just throw yeah. at you and you can do what you want. Wait, where? where? I, I, it's so rare to see a cynical take anywhere. I'm going to say <laughs> it may have been the internet where I got this. Mm, I'll have to check that out one of these. Okay, days. all right. So uh, here's what you're going to look for. Um, okay. This is somebody said, hey, this is a great way for him to still be in charge with quotes without having to go to um, or show up for a bunch of uh, Congress Zoom interrogations <laughs> like all the other tech people. Uh-huh. And I don't know if there's any truth to that. I guess well, the CEO... no, I mean, that is the law is that if you are not the CEO, you are legally prohibited from being called in front of Congress. We all know that. So mm. clever move, Jeff. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> don't call him. Yeah, that's they could, true. You know, they could try to send Eddie Jassy and have Congress go like, no, we, we want to talk to Jeff Bezos. He was the guy that was in charge. And like, you know, it's all a negotiation. So right. I don't think this like is a get out of jail free card because uh, mm. he's not leaving the company. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and, and right. also he was there through all the things they're investigating. So we'll see. I mean, maybe it'll be just better to have Andy Jassy sit in front of Congress anyway. But it's not like now it won't impact Jeff Bezos if he doesn't actually have to show up. Like, yeah. honestly, that could be the clever plan of like, hey, uh, I don't really want to do all this stuff. Andy, can you take it over? But it doesn't let Amazon off the hook or anything. No. It's just a nicer day for Jeff Bezos. Right. And it may mean that they have, they still, call, like you like you said, they'd still call him in there. But do you yeah, see, right. like, this feels like a transition on par with, like, Steve Jobs passing right. and, and Tim Cook taking yeah. over or Microsoft, Bill Gates yeah, stepping yeah. down. Absolutely. Probably more yeah. like the Bill Gates thing than anything, I would think, um, mm-hmm. in terms of just kind of how this looks and stuff. But in terms of... Uh, transitions the Balmer one was a little rough things have got better for them but Balmer wasn't I don't think the Balmer time is thought very fondly of by a lot of people yeah the transition wasn't rough the Balmer time yeah was the rough. actual right Balmer time that. was yeah. bad um, but in the Tim Cook case things have gone pretty well for Apple yeah you, you could say as an understatement um, and and people weren't sure people uh, like even mm-hmm. two years after Steve Jobs died People were like, is Tim Cook really up to the job? They haven't done it. And of course, now we have this like record earnings uh, in their latest quarter. So yeah, yeah. I think they're doing fine. I think fine. we can fairly say Tim Cook has done a very good job. Yeah. So I, so I Apple. just, I guess yeah. I'm, I, Poor Apple. I'm super curious about how this new doodle, what's his name again? I keep forgetting his name. Andy Jassy. Andy uh, so, Jassy. you know, the, the, if folks aren't aware, Amazon's big moneymaker is AWS. Uh, Amazon retail makes a lot of money too, but it famously ran right at margin, which means it didn't actually turn a profit for years and years and years. It has started to turn a profit, but AWS has just been a money churner. Uh, And what Amazon did was take what it had built for itself and turned it into a separate business uh, that it still owns, cloud services. It is the leading cloud service provider in the world, and Angie Jassy has run that. So what we're getting is the guy who made AWS work, the engine that powers Amazon, is now taking over the rest of Amazon. Bezos, the guy who's got pie-in-the-sky ideas, is going to still talk about new products and initiatives. But Andy Jassy will be making sure that the engine that is Amazon retail, as well as AWS, which will still be under him, it'll get, they'll get a new CEO, but uh, all, all clicks on all cylinders. Yeah. Do you think they'll ever... This is a totally unrelated thing, but it's because you said pie in the sky. Do you think there'll ever be a place? Because you like pie. Tom's a big pie fan. Love pie. I like uh, the sky. So and I know you recently lost a pie place due up. to like the COVID restrictions kind of knocked your favorite oh. pie place out of business. Yep. Oh, no. So really? would you go yeah, Would you go down, to a place called? It closed down early, too. Like yeah, it was June. Yeah, it was way, way early. I remember memories. you talking about it way early in this. Yeah, and yeah. If they opened a Thank place called... Thank you for the 3.14 years. <laughs> <laughs> if you for the 3.14 years. If you, if you open, or if somebody opened a place called Pie in the Sky, would you go? You'd go there. You'd try that out. Right? Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's all. That's all. I, I mean, unless I was, you know, it was really far away or I couldn't get there or something. I, I yeah. What if that's was, your question? <laughs> that's it. That's all I got. It would be, <laughs> oh, yeah. it would clearly, it would be in like the, um, the Space Needle. Either in Vegas or the the one in oh Seattle. sure yeah well it seems like every yeah. city has one of those now like the Sky Tree in Tokyo mm-hmm. and yeah uh, that's Soul where Tower. you'd open your pie in the yeah. sky uh, mm-hmm. franchise you have to have it there yeah oh I'd absolutely we love to do that when we travel we always go we go to the Sydney Tower or whatever it's called mm-hmm. like we always go to the big high thing and yeah. <laughs> take the elevator up because I hate elevators so Eileen likes to watch as I you know I'm terrified as we <laughs> go the elevator uh, and then How we get outside and it's it's great. Yeah. How are you with uh, Ferris wheels? 
But yeah, how are you with Ferris wheels? Uh, it could be better. Yeah, uh, okay. they're, they're fine because I can see. What I hate about elevators, I can't see out. If it's a glass elevator, totally fine. Really? See, that makes yeah. things worse for me. That's it's interesting. just yeah, and it's yeah. not a rational thing. Like I can sit there all day and tell myself like this is the, one of the safest things you'll do all day. Crossing the street is more dangerous. It's just a I don't know. Some in my course. lizard brain doesn't like yeah. it. We all. Have. But yeah, if I can see outside, it's not so bad. With the Ferris wheel, I can see outside, but. There's also no barrier. Like I could conceivably, you know, unhook my seatbelt and jump out. <laughs> Maybe I don't trust myself. I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, uh, my hope is that every elevator you ever take is a, is a safe and happy one, Tom. Thank you. I um, appreciate that. Later today, the Daily Tech News Show will happen. I'll be on there today. It's Wednesday. I love Wednesdays. Uh, and, of course, it's the best day. So if you're going to watch, I mean, today really is the day. <laughs> So check that out live or you can check out the podcast and all of that. Anything else going on that uh, people might want to hear about from you? Well, um, Brian Ibbett, mm -hmm. when's that America's Next Top <laughs> Podcast? Thing coming it is. Uh, so uh, Hammond is putting the finishing touches on the Patreon um, version of the show, <clears throat> which is going to be the complete thing. They're going to get, you know, all the Tom time, all the the reviews all the and then uh, separate episodes for each of the shows um that i think is either going to be next week or the weekend after or the all week right, after right. um the abridged version of the show that bobby's putting together is probably beginning of march or sooner oh wow okay all right okay so, so keep an eye ear out for that There's a lot of production yeah and, yeah yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that comes from was it wasn't sure exactly what the timeline was on that right. so yeah but i'll be involved in that as a coach like i have been in previous seasons keep it keep an ear yeah. out for that yeah uh, so good and hammond has them basically they both got to edit out a lot of crying there's so much crying yeah season. all the crying from, from the, all the crying from the judges yeah the yeah, judges and the coach and the berating yeah. and the, and coach. the, yeah, the <laughs> mistreatment of yeah, other people it's, it's yeah. mostly the coaching sessions are, are therapy sessions for me where the teams just say no tom it's okay <laughs> <laughs> that's right exactly you'll leave your house someday tom it's gonna be fun <laughs> one day it'll happen uh well, one way one way to find out when my coaching sessions are available is a free Tom newsletter. So go subscribe. Uh, I had some lovely conversations with people this week. Thank you to oh. those uh, who subscribed and, and sent me an email. You know, just said hi or had a thought or two about something. Uh, it was really fun uh, to have those conversations. So that that it's an email newsletter. That's what it's for. Go go check it out. FreeTomNewsletter.com. Sounds good to me. Tom Merritt, everybody. Ace Detect on Twitter. We will see you today at 2.30 Mountain Time. Uh, the only time's on the matter. We'll see you then. I had to look because there was a, we used to have a place here in Denver called the House of Pies and their logo was the pie symbol inside the typical, oh, you know, that's a great square idea. Square with a roof on it, house shape. Yeah. And um, I'm on their website right now and they've just got the, the greatest video showing them making pies and cakes and all that stuff. Mm. It's still going and it's, it hasn't repeated yet. Um, but they're only in Houston now, only in Texas. Oh. I guess there's one in the Woodlands, but three locations in Houston. Bummer. But, uh, Bummer. Houseofpies.com. I can't. It's really good. I guess I can't eat pie anymore, can I? Unless someone bakes it with like uh, a meat pie. You could have a delicious meat pie. Meat pie. Yeah, Doesn't have do to be a sweet pie. It could be a savory. A savory be. pie. <laughs> if uh, if somebody wants to <laughs> give me a good recipe for like a sugar free pie, uh, there you go. using like monk fruit or zevia or something, let me know. Mm -hmm. Because I'm off. I the imagine show, you can it. just you just do a pie, and when you when you make it, it, you just substitute monk fruit sweetener for the sugar. That's possible, right? That may be all yeah. I have to do. Yeah. P. Crumb says, "What's the a, point?" <laughs> it's, it's probably not one for one. It's probably not one cup of monk because monk fruit sweetener I think is a little sweeter than sugar. So you just go like half a cup monk fruit versus a cup of sugar. Yeah, they they do say on the I think they say on the package what the difference is. So I, I right, can probably right, do that. Would, and yeah, I think they make some perfect. baking stuff with monk fruit that's like has the right consistency. Oh. I, I don't know. I have to look into it. Uh, but before cool. we do any of that, forget all that. <laughs> There's this. Oh, Spagnolo joins us also from Colorado and does yeah. so now for recommendals today. Nicole, how are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Good. One Fantastic. of the best bakers I know. Yeah. Oh. Speaking thanks. of bakers, man, mm -hmm. can you imagine living next door to Nicole? What a day that would be. Oh, no kidding. You'd be 
20 pounds heavier by the end of the year. <laughs> and I'd have a backyard full of wood scraps. Why do these things yeah. keep getting thrown over the fence? That's right. That's right. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's good to have you here. Nicole joins us on Wednesdays, talks about recommendal stuff we've seen on streaming services that we like and that we want to share with you fine folks at home. And today's no different. Brian, we should probably start with you because that is the tradition. Let's Any setup for this? We got two of them, it looks like, from you today. Yes. These are two movies that are available on HBO Max. One's uh, kid-friendly, the other one very much not. Oh, all right. Sounds okay, like we'll HBO Max in a nutshell that's... to me, so that sounds good. <laughs> it kind of is, right. It yeah, really is. Exactly. There's so many. I know this was a problem for them when they were setting up streaming, because HBO known for its edgy, dark, nudity business, right? Yes. And then they're like, well, we got to also have... All the old Looney Tunes and Cartoon Network. And <laughs> right, DC exactly. Stuff You've got to, yeah. <laughs> so it's a, little, it's a little weird right now. But anyway, here it is, your first clip. It was in all the papers at the time. Men searching in the Arctic had found a yellow metal. Get off my gold. Plane. A mad fever spread as far as word can travel. And thousands more rush to the north to try their luck. These men needed dogs, big dogs with strong muscles to pull their slits. Good morning there, Buck. Buck was neither house dog nor kennel dog. Here you go, boy. His master was Santa Clara County Judge. Watch it, you! In this realm, Buck was king. Damn it. So that's uh, <laughs> someone at the end yelling, damn it. Um, yeah. That's uh, that's your Call of the Wild there, isn't it? Exactly what it is. Yeah, Call of the Wild based on the novel by Jack London about the Klondike Gold Rush and a dog named Buck. And um, uh, it's really, really sweet. Uh, it, yeah, the, the hardest thing for me to get past was the CGI dog. And I'm just going to say that right up front is that it's it's a dog that's purely CGI. They don't like have, all right, some scenes are a real dog and then other scenes are a CGI dog. It's all it's all CGI. So there are points where it's like, uh, yeah, Buck isn't moving like a real dog would move. However, um, this is it's really, really sweet. It's really well done. Harrison Ford is fantastic in it. And I think he actually, um, because he acts so well with the absence of dog, you get past the fake dog business really quick. Yeah. Um, uh, but he's really good. This also has Kara G from uh, oh, The Expanse. Oh, I love Kamina. her. And she's in quite a lot. And I'm like looking at her and thinking, oh my God, is that Kamina? Is that drummer. Kara G? Yeah, it's drummer, she's dude. Not, she's not talking really weird with her lower teeth out. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, she's in there and she's great. Uh, also you've got, uh, Dan Stevens, who was Legion. Oh yeah. We like Dan Legion. Stevens. Yeah. He's good. And Amy Pond, uh, Karen Gillan is yeah. in there. Yeah. Nebula. Yeah. So you get a couple of Marvel <laughs> people in there. Bradley Whitford, uh, plays the judge. Uh, it's great. It's really, really worth seeing and, uh, easily something you could watch with little kids and, and they'd love it. I meant to um, I meant to see this when it was being advertised and stuff because I I yeah. personally I like I don't have a problem with CGI dog because uh, it's fine I don't it's just not a big deal to me yeah you know and, um, and it, I got over it really quick but that was the first thing I had a problem with is like okay the CGI dog they do a great job though with the real the practical effects that go along with the CGI dog so. Yeah. Um, and so the guy, and it's is based that a on CGI a dog behind Nicole right now? I can't tell. It might be CGI. <laughs> it might be Mark. That's a real dog. It's a real dog. <laughs> it's Millie. Oh, Hi, Millie. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's 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 worth seeing. It's called The Wild. It's on HBO Max right now. Didn't do well in theaters only because it came out right before the pandemic. So I was like, all right, now opening uh, Call of the Wild. Now closing every theater. Yeah, that was like that month. Or it was like. February or what? Maybe it was week. within, yeah, within a few a couple of weeks of each other. So, yeah. yeah. So, right about uh, now, last year, we started hearing things, right? Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, see, I, I had started preparing in January. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you knew. I yeah. was, <laughs> I was like, 
all right, let's 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 uh, prepare. You know what yeah, that is? Know, that's I that, even told it's that mom's intuition. Kim did the same thing. For she sure. was like, uh, "Oh, I told Mark, I go, I'm sorry, I'm gonna get really weird." <laughs> meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, I was in Chicago getting ready to go to uh, uh, Geek Bowl. Yeah, the last trip oh, I've yeah. taken. Yep. Yeah, yep, I remember that too. Mark had uh, gone to Atlanta. For a thing called Workbench Con. Ooh, the lost city of Atlanta. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Workbench Con. Oh, I love That's it. That's what it's called. So, Do they really call it that? So exciting. Yeah. Yes, yes. Workbench Con. Yeah. Okay. That's it's fine. so weird to look at that the the landscape of YouTube and and to be there when we were the first ones to see. Mm. How many? I mean, there's a whole convention now around what we do. Yeah. It's so weird. Oh, oh yeah, rude. no kidding. It's awesome. You gotta, yeah. gotta appreciate that. Well, I guess it was March seventh was Geek Bowl, so it was a month from now. But um, but that was the last trip I took, and so well, March yeah. was like that was when everybody knew. Yeah, we were like, exactly. okay, we're this is gonna. I get, mean, we get bad. We were honestly there thinking, Ugh, is this? Uh, you know, are they gonna? <laughs> are we gonna get stuck here? Are they gonna close flights and? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. We were still trying to decide what to do the same month with TMS Vegas, and it was like mm-hmm. a week yeah. before where we finally called it. And Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. I hated that. That sucked. Last year sucked. Can I just put it out there one yeah. more time? Hey, guess what, everybody? Shocker. 2020 freaking sucked. <laughs> All right. Um, Sorry. Your so second Call the Wild clip. is a recommendal one. Number two, <laughs> okay. uh, quite a bit darker. And... Um, You'll hear the dude uh, who said, oh, yeah, you're a real hoot uh, in here, as well as Denzel Washington. That might give you a clue oh, as to what this okay. is. Oh, okay. I, I know exactly what this is. Here we go. Yes, sir. You remember a punk named J.J. Kendricks robbed the Quick Mart? We've got a witness who ID'd him, but she's getting the uh, guilts. All she knows for certain is that he was wearing a really nice pair of boots, fancy stitching, Unforgettable, she says. But Kendricks is a suspect in a robbery down in L.A. Down uh, in L.A.? Yeah. Is this headed somewhere? Yeah. And so are you. There's a prelim day after tomorrow with a motion to dismiss. You drive to L.A. and bring back the bloodstained boots. She IDs them, and the judge sets a trial date. The blood, they definitely ran the ABO on the blood. That's correct. I mean, this is, this is, this is a DA problem, Captain, not, not ours. Oh, no, it's our problem. No evidence, no conviction. I got nobody else. Uh, that's great. Listen, you're a real hoot. There he is. <laughs> I'm glad you added that. Uh, so that's that new thing with the little, uh, little peep, little, little promises, little, little, little people, little something. <laughs> it is the little, little people, the little things, and the it's little, funny because the little things. <laughs> in the last, it seems like in the last ten years, we've gotten about a thousand movies and TV series with little, like Pretty Little Liars yeah. and Pretty Little, little Liars. And little fires everywhere, and oh, you yeah, know, like so many damn little things that I'm ready for some big things. But, um, <laughs> this is a um, a crime drama, uh, it feels just feels like it's dark. It's actually um, being compared a lot to Seven for better or for worse, but it's basically uh, Rami Malik and Denzel Washington teaming up together to try and catch a serial killer in LA. Uh, in the 90s and uh, they find uh, this goofy dude who's a little dark and twisted named uh, or played by Jared Leto and think that he might be their man and so they I bet you that was fun working with him on that oh set. yeah he's the joker <laughs> right exactly he's he's hard to yeah. work with right I've heard all I can think of it anymore he's now very, yeah, yeah. That he's super hard to work with and it seems like and he chews up the scenery in this one he is he's very very dark and creepy but this this uh, new serial killer has the same MO as a serial killer that um, that Denzel Washington chased years ago. And there's some dark history between the two of them that unfolds as you as you watch this movie. That sounds like um, um, Silence of the Lambs ish template. A little Silence of the Lambs, yeah. Seven, seven. It, there's there's definitely you know it's it's a trope that gets used every once in a while. The the uh, the detective that's haunted by a, a former or a previous case and yeah. he just couldn't get past. Sure. Um, but this is, uh, it's really good. It's, it's, I can't stress how dark it is. This is not one to watch with the kids. 
Um, <laughs> but it's also got Natalie Morales, who is great. She was um, she was on that that really good uh, Rob Lowe TV show, cr- criminally canceled before it's time but not the one where he's like currently a firefighter or something now right no that. no okay. he was a he's an actor um who or was he an actor he's the brother of fred savage who works in a law firm and oh yeah yeah he's an actor playing he plays like a a, a law show character and he gets all of his ideas and stuff from fred savage but he's horrible at it okay. <laughs> so they bring him on to uh uh, bring him on to work at the law firm because he's got experience mm. as um, uh, as a lawyer. Uh, but I can't remember the name. Of it. It's like it is like the Grifter or the. Is it the Grifter? Oh, so it was so. The Grifter good. was Rob Lowe, wasn't it? Yeah. And. Uh... Yeah, but that's no, it wasn't. It's not called the Grifter. Grinders. That's Grinders. It. Grinders. Oh, Grinders. That's it. Yeah. That yeah. if you have not seen that's I'm giving you a bonus recommendal. If you have not seen Grinder, the Grinder, <laughs> it is. One season, quick watch, you will love it. Okay. What happened to that? Just didn't get any love from the network? And it was a, that was a get any love. show, right? It was a, what's that? It was, an, it was on Fox. I, remember. I think it was on Fox. Yeah. And it was just so yeah. good. Anyway. Network TV. Uh, but that, is, that just has uh, Natalie Morales in, in common with this. Um, anyway, this is, it's good. It's on HBO. Now, here's the deal. It's one of these movies that, that HBO is doing simultaneous theater release and hbo max release which means it's only going to be on hbo max for a month so you do have a limit before uh, before it disappears basically at the end of february it's gone and they put something new up is wonder woman uh, gone yet um i don't know it might be it it might have left on january 25th or whatever the the one month because yeah it was christmas so p squared says yes (laughs) Wonder Woman's gone. I'm like, I was playing this game with that movie. Like, I'll wait that kind of towards yeah. the end. And then I forgot and I missed it. <laughs> you didn't miss much. And it'll be, it'll know, be streaming I, again before too I long. heard, I heard. Yeah. yeah. It's but, not great. Uh, anyway, the little things, uh, Denzel Washington, Rami Malek, Jared Leto. Um, it's directed by the guy who did the blind side. If that's another uh, nudge. Never saw it. In the check it out direction. Never saw it. Never, never saw seen Blindside? Blind nope. I don't know why. Oh, I just what? never saw it. Yeah. Just didn't see oh, it. Oh, it's another good one. Yeah. Um meant to. Well, I, anyway, like, I like uh, I like I like your I like Sandra Bullock. Big fan. Yeah, she's not in this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but she was in the blind side, right? So she was in the blind side. Yeah, no she kidding. So the that's surprising that you wouldn't have seen that because you do like uh yeah, I like, her, you a like lot. her a lot. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the little things don't watch it with kids, but it's worth seeing, and it's on HBO Max for about uh, twenty six more days. All right. Well, there you have it. Here's mine, and I cheated a little on how I recorded it because I didn't want to give it away too fast. So let's <laughs> just say this: I found a um, a version of this show that it was translated to a different language. <laughs> And so that way, we'll see if you guys can still figure it out. This is the non-English version, but I watched the English version, also on HBO Max. Here you go. Guten Morgen, mein Scheißerchen, gut geschlafen? Klar, Mami, und dabei kam mir ein voll cooler Traum. Da saß ich auf einem Eiscreme-Esel mit keinem anderen als Mr. Dean Martin. Wow. Natürlich war das Eis weggeschmolzen, noch bevor wir in die Walnussstadt ritten. Aber das hat Dean nichts ausgemacht, weil er eben so ein klasse Typ ist. Ja, der große, heilige Martin. Okay. <laughs> Is it, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing uh, the Brack Show, only because I know you've been watching the Brack Show. <laughs> You're right. It is the Brack Show. Is it, is it? <laughs> it's totally the Brack Show. Uh, that is the German version of Mother. the Brack Show. Uh, it was a Dean Martin. <laughs> yeah. You can hear Dean Martin in there. The rest of it was very German. Um, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I love the Brack Show. I'm, I don't know why that thing s- speaks to me even more than then Brack as a character did as part of Space Coast, Coast to Coast, which is where it oh, all cool. came from. There's something about it as a standalone. They treat it like a family sitcom. And the guy that plays his dad is this little tiny dude. This looks like a normal human mustache. being. With a mustache. Who sits in a giant chair. His mom's a big <laughs> alien lady. Uh, right. His neighbor down the street is a giant robot named Thundercles. <laughs> it's just so good. I don't know why it's good. It's awesome. I just love it. I need I to laugh. see. I need to see more of it. I, I, um, well, for whatever reason, my love of him on Space Ghost 
it didn't connect with me when I watched the first episode of the Brack show and that I enjoyed it, but I don't know why I didn't go back to it. So I need to go back to it. Uh, JC, JC Calhoun's like, I can't believe Scott has time to find the German version of the Brack show, but not watch WandaVision. <laughs> it's just, yeah, the down, you it's like, just a single click. If you click. like a fake send up of a sitcom, Scott, I've got a recommendal <laughs> for you. But it's just a click. You just change the language to German and boom, it's spoken German. It isn't like I had to do anything special to go find it but anyway it's very uh it's very funny and silly and over the top dumb uh it's it's a lot like those kind of adult swim weird you know uh harvey birdman attorney at law like all yeah. these things are sprung from uh those weird things c lab and all that so it's it's kind of in that vein but it also feels like it's its own thing because it's not it's not at its core based on some ancient thing from the 60s like all the rest of those i just mentioned it's 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 its spinoff but it's its own thing and i find it to be really creative and fun and the music is great brack sings the stupidest songs and they get in your head and they never leave and i just love and there's it. so many like one-liners that are mark and i would quote one-liners from that show all the time yeah it's got great one-liners and every time he dealt with thundercles i laugh i just doesn't matter what's going on there's something about the super serious neighbor thundercles who is always like wanting to blow shit up and Brax just sad because his stuff donkey's missing or whatever. It's like just the dumbest it, little ideas. The shows are really short, like 10 minutes, I think mm -hmm. ep minutes, per episode. 28 episodes. You could binge this whole thing in, in just a little over four hours. Yeah. All and, 28 episodes. And it's a great, just Did have you, it on at the side while you're doing other stuff sort of thing. And, and uh, highly recommend it. HBO max. Did you get to the uh, episode where he meets the fan? <laughs> yes. He's like, my if I take him get a little pics. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mark and I would say so when we met you, Scott, yes. that was the quote that we would say back and forth to each other. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. I didn't know that. I didn't realize that was a thing. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a fun, stupid time. And I I like fun, stupid things. So go check it out. All right. Uh Nicole, let's swing it on over to you. Do you have a clip or anything? All right. I do have a clip. Um, I decided to, it's so funny to, to me, this movie is not very old, but then I looked at the date that it was released and said, Oh wow. Uh, 2005, that was a long time ago. <laughs> so <laughs> it is an older movie. Right. Uh, I have very good memories of this movie and I rewatched it. And did you retain know, those, I, those memories or did you feel, I don't know. Um, I think I, I might have ruined my memory of it. Oh, no. This okay. happens to me, too. But it's tough. still, I still think it's a great movie. It's a hidden gem, especially if you haven't seen it. There's Ava. Oh, hi. What's up, Ava? Aww. What's going on? I'm doing a show here. My brother what do you need? took a dump. I'm ready for my oh, close-up, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> oh, you just want to watch me. Okay. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you the clip. It was really hard to find a clip. She's such a ham. So. All right. Uh, I'm going to hit play. Not here looking. Goes. Is it playing? Yeah. It took a while to load. Brandon, you're up, bro. Couldn't sleep. It's a little quiet. Fine, Emily. You all right? Oh, I know this. Yeah, what are you, for zero? Forced into taking the early bus. The others don't run by my street. <laughs> so what's the word with them? He's gone. Can't raise her? No, I can't. So what now? Oh, I know I just... Uh, I don't know. All right. That's Brick, isn't it? Mm. It is Brick. <laughs> Oh, Brick is awesome. Oh, Brick. Yeah, that's good. All right. Good. So this is, it came out in 2005. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a kind of neo-noir detective mm -hmm. movie that yeah, takes they, place they in make, a high school. They make a bunch of high school kids talk like they're like 1940s uh, inspectors right. and stuff. It's like great. So yeah. It's a little off-putting at first. Yeah. Um, Ryan but it Johnson. is a Falcon in, yeah, in yeah. high school. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is streaming on Amazon Prime. Oh, you heard uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt mm -hmm. in that clip. This is one of his... <laughs> anyway, you throwing kisses at yourself. <laughs> uh, this is one of his earlier movies. 
I did not realize the director. How do you say, Rian Johnson? It's Ryan, Ryan Johnson. This is Ryan. Ryan Johnson. Ryan. <laughs> Rian. <laughs> 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 I didn't realize he did uh, Knives Out and Looper, yeah. which is the same tone of this movie. Like yeah. you, th- it makes sense that he made yeah. he directed this movie. Yeah. Uh, this was it his also big has breakout, right. So like, this was his big giant. You know, yeah, yeah. Make a noise kind of movie for him. He also uh, also in this movie, you heard Joseph Gordon Levitt looking for a girl named Emily that is played by the pregnant girl from Lost. Mm. Oh, the little uh, uh, so, uh, the Australian oh, girl, um, the blonde yeah, Claire. Yeah, Claire. Emily oh, de Robin. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she's in the Lucas Haas is in it. Um, there, you'll you'll notice a, a number of people that are familiar. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a who did it, what happened kind of movie. Uh, it's weird to see a high school movie with kids that don't have cell phones. <laughs> Like, oh yeah, right. I under it's like right at that time before the iPhone came out. So there's phone booths everywhere, and there's like code, and so it's just it's it's a weird little time capsule movie. So. Well, also wasn't it set? It's not set in 05. I think it's set earlier, isn't it? You, no, I think it's 05. I thought it was set earlier, but maybe I maybe I remember that wrong. I thought it was like a not 80s or it's mo- it's a modern day take mm. on neo-noir detective movie all right hmm. with for high some school reason, kids for some reason i thought it was in a different year but yeah it, the the point of the movie is that it's trying it's it reminds me of the romeo and juliet thing where it's dicaprio and what's mm-hmm. her name and everything's set modern but the language of it is straight out of the shakespeare play this is a little mm-hmm. like that in that the yeah. language of it yeah. is, is straight out mm-hmm. of the noir uh, style of the 50s and 40s and 50s but set in a time that we all recognize and it's it's I think that's all on purpose obviously to, to create this weird yeah. feeling um, so too much cell phone phonery would have been weird I think for sure yeah yeah it wouldn't fit but it, it one cell phone shows up it's a flip phone yeah <laughs> you know like old Motorola yeah that's the only time a cell phone shows up but for the most part they're all like going to phone booths and being secretive and i remember this was uh, a big deal this is a big deal here locally because it it premiered at sundance that year and everybody um were they were all losing their mind over it like it was like this yeah huge Mm -hmm. stink in town about oh brick that's the movie this year and this guy named ryan johnson no one had heard of and he's gonna be the hot new thing and but and whatever and it was like a big deal that way but so you have all these fond feelings what about it what about it diminish that for you the kids, did, I mean, they didn't. They didn't feel like kids. They mm-hmm. didn't feel like high school. They didn't feel like the way that they talked. I, I mean, I understand the feel, but it 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 almost, I almost lost it the second time around. Mm. I don't know. Mm. It's a weird watch the second time around for Interesting. me. Interesting. It's still a great movie. It's still a cool, who done it, kind of mystery. Um, it just felt like everybody was being way too old oh my God. i guess because i have a kid now i go oh my god i don't even want to think about my kids like like where well, are the adults yeah but you're basically <laughs> describing the the point of the movie is that they all yeah. sound like and the adults are missing like they are they kind of yeah. don't exist in that world there's only the vice principal right that um they're the the main character is like an informant kind of thing um it's it's so weird it's like it's a weird it, movie, yeah. the whole high school thing kind of pulls me out of it at times. Hmm. Right. Um, probably because I know these actors are much older now too. And I've seen them in other roles. I don't know. Hmm. I think at the time it was just like, wow, this is really cool. movie. Plus this is Joseph. <laughs> Cause you Gordon, didn't really know what was going on. This is Joseph Gordon Levitt looking very um, third rock from the sun still, you know, he doesn't look. Mm-hmm. He's very yeah. cute in this movie. Yeah. He's very cute in this movie. He is cute. His hair is all long and wavy and yeah. Way better than when he tries to look like uh, Bruce Willis. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, I could have gone for uh, a Nightwing series from him, a spinoff from Batman. Oh, yeah. Right after after his uh, Dark Knight uh, Rises. Yeah. His brief moment as Dick Grayson or whatever Mm -hmm. the hell was going on there. Like, 
pull him out and make a full you could have had a whole franchise there that wasn't that was an f up dc yeah. what are you doing jerks missed opportunity yeah uh well all right then so yeah brick available check it out on i Prime. mean if you if you've already seen brick when it first came out i would watch it again because it did feel like i was watching it for i wouldn't say the first time but i, I didn't remember a lot of it mm. like it was a good refresher yeah so amazon well, prime there brick. it is amazon prime and here's the good news if you didn't follow any of this stuff we talked about today you can follow Nicole on Twitter, Nicole Spag, and she'll tell you what it all mm -hmm. was. She'll give you links and everything. So I will. do that if you're not already following her. And if you are, well, you already know how cool she is. Nicole, have a fantastic day. Hey, oh, one one last thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Devs, you yeah. recommended it. I watched mm -hmm. it. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. supporting that recommendation. If you haven't watched Devs on Hulu, watch it you know what you need to do now is go watch all everything else alex gar uh garland ever wrote or directed yeah because he did the ex machinima uh, and uh, ex machina yeah machina <laughs> ex machinima starring rianne johnson yeah rianne johnson um what was the other one he, he does those um uh, oh, what was uh, the other? he directed that uh, Natalie Portman uh, alien thing. Uh, Annihilation's fantastic. Oh, yeah, Annihilation. oh, I haven't seen Annihilation yet. Really good. Did I did you watch see that? Ex Machina. And then watch, he wrote Sunshine, which we did for Film Sack recently. That movie is amazing. I love Sunshine. So you should watch Sunshine. It's a very good science fiction movie. Uh, just anything he does, I am all down for it. And Devs was like the cream mm -hmm. of the freaking crop for him. That was, was so good. Yeah, my brain hurt after that one. <laughs> and it just makes me mad that it's, it's over. I just want more. Um, but whatever he yeah, does next, I'll follow that guy. Anyway. They could set it up for they could set it up for a season two. I'm sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, maybe. Uh, yeah. I think he's come out and said this will never be anything more than what it was. But but maybe maybe we'll get lucky. Anyway, uh, let's Probably all not. be up all, all night right. to get lucky. Nicole Spag, everybody. We'll see you soon. <laughs> all right. Hey Brian, what are you doing yes, over sir. there? Look at this. Look at us here. We're done. This is the show. We're done. Uh, <clears throat> quick note. Wendy, tomorrow. Okay? She'll be Yes. Here. It's already Thursday. What's that about? That's weird. I know. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, partly because we missed today, I guess. But uh, core tonight, or not tonight, sorry, tomorrow night. What's today? Today's Wednesday. Not tonight. <laughs> tomorrow night at 5 p.m. Uh, and um, let's see. What else? Anything else? You don't record. You record Thursdays now, too, for Coverville. Coverville's so Thursday now. Night. Yep. Uh, yeah, today is just getting stuff together for uh, Coverville. I won't say what it is yet. Ooh. It'll be fun. Ooh. I'm going to guess. Can I guess? And I know I'll be wrong. But, sure. Yeah. Uh, a tribute to Iggy Pop. That's my guess. Oh, that's a good guess. Uh, no. Oh, okay. Um, but it's somebody who uh, years ago to bring sexy back. <gasps> I, uh, You'll never get it from that clue. No. Never, ever get it from that clue. He tore off my boob cover. All right, moving on. <laughs> That's right. We'll do that uh, tomorrow. So come back for the show. There's other stuff going on. Uh, DTNS today, I'll be on there. So come check that out. I might stream tonight. Uh, we'll see. I'm also alt leveling my Demon Hunter because why not? Wow. Uh, so that's fun. And I also got, oh, I got, uh, oh, oh, this is the thing I did want to mention. If you are a member of my personal art Patreon, the uh, Frog Pants Patreon, I'm going to start doing daily. Basically, there'll, there'll be anything from doodles to complete art, but art that is exclusive to that channel and followers there or uh, supporters there. We're going to put them nowhere else. They won't be on Twitter. won't be anything else. Just something for you guys every single day. So if you're already over there, you already know this is happening because I put a post up about it. And I owe you two of them because yesterday got weird. But uh, <laughs> I'll, don't worry, you'll get three today. Uh, but anyway, yeah, one drawing per day. It's all part of my effort to um, blow out a quick quick and dirty like creative sketch per day um i started finding myself brian i don't know if you do this with with certain things but like with my art it was like well i have to do a comic this week and i have to do these three things for freelance and i have that and then i'm not doing any of that creative work just for the for sheer creativity of it right for so sure yeah i'm gonna do that more and so that's what that's for anyway yeah and, and we do need to start working on those tms stickers Oh, so, yeah. you know, there's some pressure for you. Yeah, there's a little pressure. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's get some more pressure on there. I like it. Uh, yeah. hold, that's what they say when you got a snake bite or whatever. Put pressure on it, right? That's so, right. Exactly. Ours yes. is a creative snake bite. Anyway, <laughs> we're done. The morning stream at gmail.com is our email address. Check us out at frogpants.com slash TMS. Therein you will find a link to our Patreon at patreon.com slash TMS. 
if you're already on there, you know I'm preaching to the choir, but there's a bunch of you who aren't. So head on over and help us out. All right, all right. Uh, music for now, play Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I will assemble all of those into a command and follow that command. Thank Derek you. wrote in, said, hey, Saskatoon and Banff, both uh, in, in Canada, Canadian uh, uh, cities. I'm turning 36 on February 1st and would like something fun to listen to while working at home like many others, I'm sure. Not much to say apart from say safe. And isn't there some guitar game called Something Hero? Aww. Thanks for the awesome stuff you do. I really appreciate having you in my ear holes. Signed, Derek in Canada. Let's see if we can play that old file. Uh, here it is. Isn't there a guitar that's called Something Hero? <laughs> <laughs> it's always better when you remember what it, she actually says and hearing yes. it. It's so good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that clip, by the way. Uh, September 26, 2012 is when we got that. So Wow. Way it's back. like, you know, first first year of doing this show, basically. <laughs> yep. yep. Uh, all right. He wants something fun, Japanese cover or inspired. I've got just the Japanese cover for you. I had uh, a Radiohead cover in there, and I changed it out the last minute because I, I like this one a lot better. This one came out on a 2007 tribute to David Bowie that I picked up while I was in Japan. So you know it's Japanese. Mm. It's performed by Nomiya Maki. It's a cover of Fame. Here you go. Oh, my gosh. All right. So here's that. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Stay safe. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. <laughs> oh, Lilu Multipass. Oh, there at the end. Lilu Dallas there. Yeah. Mm. All right. Hold on.